Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to 360 Aviation Academy. Today we shall discuss a question which has appeared in a previous Indigo Airline examination for junior first officers. The question reads, what is the effect on the Mach number and true airspeed in an aircraft that is descending with constant calibrated airspeed? Now, in this situation, we are descending with a constant calibrated airspeed of 250 knots. Now, as we descend, remember, we are entering a layer of air where the density is higher. So because of that, your true airspeed will in reality reduce. So as you descend with a constant calibrated airspeed, your true airspeed will reduce. Additionally, you will notice that your Mach number is also reducing. Therefore, in a descent with a constant calibrated airspeed, both our true airspeed and Mach number both will reduce. To easily solve this question, I would recommend that you draw the simple graph. On the lower end of this graph would be your airspeed or speed. On the other axis would be represented your altitude. So let's say we are maintaining a speed of 250 knots and we are climbing from zero feet all the way up to 40,000 feet. So we are maintaining a constant calibrated airspeed. This is the airspeed that you would see on your primary flight displays inside the aircraft. You are maintaining a constant calibrated airspeed from zero feet all the way up to 40,000 feet. But in reality, what is happening to your true airspeed and your Mach number? Remember, as an aircraft climbs from a low altitude to a high altitude, the air density significantly reduces. And because the air density reduces, the aircraft is able to fly faster at higher altitudes. And because it's able to fly faster, its true airspeed increases. This is the reason why you're able to fly a Delhi-Bombay sector in under two hours because your true airspeed is extremely fast at high altitudes. So while your airspeed indicator inside your aircraft, your CAS may show an airspeed of 250 knots and even at 40,000 feet, the CAS may read 250 knots. But in reality, your true airspeed because of the low density is much, much, much higher. You may have a true airspeed of almost greater than 400 knots. So you can see that in this graph, your true airspeed as you climb would increase. Finally, you have your Mach number. Remember your Mach number, the formula for Mach number is Mach number is equal to true airspeed by local speed of sound. Remember, your true airspeed is increasing. And at higher altitudes, your speed of sound would actually be less because of the low temperatures at high altitude. So your overall Mach number is also increasing. So coming back to your graph here, you can see that your true airspeed and your Mach number both would increase as you climb from sea level to 40,000 feet. The easy way to remember this is the acronym Chicken Tikka Masala. Hashtag CTM. So if you are climbing with a constant calibrated airspeed, remember your true airspeed would increase and because of that, your Mach number would also increase. Both T and M come after C, right? So that's an easy way to remember. So you can see that as we are climbing, we are climbing with a constant 
calibrated airspeed of 250 knots. As we climb with a constant calibrated airspeed, we can see that our true airspeed reflected over here is also increasing. You can see it's 403 knots. As we slowly climb, it's becoming 404, eventually 405, and it'll keep increasing as we climb. And if you look at our Mach number, you can see that as we climb, our Mach number is also increasing. So for a climb with a constant calibrated airspeed, both our true airspeed and Mach number will increase. Similarly, if you are descending, the exact opposite happens. If you are descending with constant calibrated airspeed, your true airspeed would decrease and your Mach number would decrease. So the answer for this particular question would be option Charlie. Your Mach number decreases and your true airspeed decreases.